And there came a time known as the third millennium, a time when the people of the earth were ravaged by disease, pestilence, and poisons, a time when the horsemen of the apocalypse ran the multinational corporations, a time when America's citizens were waking up to a future of no money and no jobs, a time when a special man came forward a man that your American taskmasters did not want you to see or hear. A man whom they took prisoner and hid away. A man whose name is Yahweh bin Yahweh. For telling people the truth, Yahweh bin Yahweh was taken prisoner by the minions of darkness. For giving people hope, Yahweh Ben Yahweh was led away to Golgotha. This is the continuing story of the past and of the future, about good and about evil, about your life and what it will become, a story that tells why the so-called black man of America had to suffer for over 400 years. A story of what will happen to the so-called black man if he returns to the laws, statutes, judgments, and commandments of God, Yuhei-Wavhe. Olam, Olam shall, shall Yuhei-Wavhe. The universe of Yuhei-Wavhe. Brought to you by the nation of you, you Wafe, Wafe, working for you and your future. Good or evil, life or death, this is your choice in this, the year 6002, the year of judgment. Shalom and welcome to the universe of Yahweh. My name is Josiah Israel and I am your host. For over seven years now, we have been discussing some of the things the Bible said would occur in the Day of Judgment. We warned you that the weather was going to change and that the powerful forces of nature were going to bring terrible destruction upon America and the world and that it was going to get worse and worse and worse, and it has. We alerted you that violence in the public schools was going to increase, and it has. We showed you in the scriptures that forewarned of wickedness in high places, and we are witnessing today gross misconduct and serious crimes being committed by some of our highest elected officials. What lies ahead for America and the world is nothing less than the proliferation of deadly diseases and plagues as foretold in the Bible. But there is hope. The Bible tells us that at the end the Messiah would be revealed, and at that time he would save the righteous from this impending destruction. That one, the Messiah, is Yahweh ben Yahweh. So we invite you to join us in the universe of Yahweh, featuring the commandments of Yahweh and the Messiah revealed. First, the commandments of Yahweh. For 6,000 years, we have been suffering at the hands of rulers who transgress the laws of yud heh and teach all people throughout the earth to transgress the laws of yud heh In order to have peace, love and harmony upon the earth, we must return to keeping the commandments, judgments, laws, and statutes of yud heh All of us have been taught that the commandments, judgments, laws, and statutes in the Old Testament Bible do not count today. In this series, we will show you that the commandments, judgments, laws and statutes in the Old Testament Bible do count and that if we govern our lives according to these commandments, judgments, 
laws, and statutes of God yud heh wav then we will have peace and goodwill upon the earth forever. We invite you to study along with us. However, in order to do so, you must have the following tools. A King James Version of the Bible, several dictionaries, the New Strong's Exhaustive Concordance, a set of encyclopedias, Hebrew and Greek lexicons, a thesaurus, and a synonym finder. Shalom. My name is Ben Kayo Bethel Yishraya. We are discussing the commandments of Yahweh. The first two commandments ever given to man were given to Adam, which was to dress and to keep the Garden of Eden. We are now discussing the second commandment, which was to keep the Garden of Eden. Last week, we looked at another meaning of the word keep. We told you that keep also means attend to, which means to minister to. Minister means to give solace, to heal. We explained that solace means to comfort in time of sorrow, and heal means to restore to original purity or integrity and to return to a sound state. We went even further and defined the words purity and integrity and told you that purity suggests to be untainted with evil and integrity implies adherence to moral and ethical principles. The time of sorrow was described as a time when we have a deep distress of the mind, when we have a conscious sense of guilt and remorse, and when we have deep regret for our sin, which is the transgression of the law, according to 1 John chapter 3, verse 4. Based upon these facts, we asserted that to keep the Garden of Eden, Yahweh commanded Adam to provide the families of the earth with help that would take care of and comfort us by providing us with some kind of service that would make us untainted with evil and by providing us with help so we could adhere to his moral and ethical principles. Yahweh commanded Adam to do this at a particular time. When we are in deep distress of mind, when we have a conscious sense of guilt and remorse, and when we have a deep regret for our sin. We read Psalm chapter 107 verse 20 and learned that Yahweh gave Adam the word to heal and to deliver the people from their destructions. Destruction was defined as to put out of existence. We pointed out that Yahweh has sent his word to heal us from putting ourselves out of existence. We explained that returning to keeping the laws of Yahweh is the only means by which death and destructions can be averted and in which we ourselves can be converted. Psalm chapter 19 verse 7 affirmed that the law of Yahweh will convert the soul and make wise the simple. We let it be known that the testimony of Yahweh is sure, which means the law of Yahweh is changeless, unalterable, beyond question, and undeniable, and that the words of the laws of Yahweh are written in Genesis through Revelation. Today, we will continue our discussion of the second direct commandment that Yahweh gave to man, Adam, which was to keep the Garden of Eden, heaven. Stated in the New Strong's Exhaustive Concordance of the Bible, copyright 1990, 
In the Hebrew Chaldee Dictionary, on page 118, keep in Hebrew is shema, which also means beware. Referenced in the Synonym Finder by J.I. Rodale, copyright 1978, on page 113, beware is synonymous to be on the lookout, to be on the alert. Therefore, to keep means that Yahweh commanded Adam to be on the lookout for or to be on the alert about someone or something in the Garden of Eden. In the Random House College Dictionary, Revised Edition, copyright 1988, on page 790, lookout means a watch kept as for something that may come or happen. On page 33, alert describes a ready and prompt attentiveness together with a quick intelligence. Although Adam was in the Garden of Eden, paradise, heaven, Yahweh commanded Adam to always keep watch for someone that may come or something that may happen. Adam was also commanded to have a ready and prompt attentiveness to whatever he heard or saw that was approaching or taking place in the Garden of Eden. And more importantly, Yahweh commanded Adam to exercise quick intelligence of his, Yahweh's laws, in assessing situations and in making right decisions. Since Adam was in the Garden of Eden, heaven, why would Yahweh give such a command? Let us open our Bible and read why in Genesis chapter 2, verses 16 and 17, which reads, and the Lord Yahweh commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Yahweh gave Adam this command, because in the Garden of Eden was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now we see here in this scripture that Yahweh commanded Adam that of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou, Adam, shall not eat of it. Why? Because for in the day that thou, Adam, eatest thereof, he shall surely die. This tells us that Yahweh commanded Adam to beware of the tree that produced knowledge of good and evil. What kind of tree would bear or produce knowledge? of good and evil? To answer this question, let us examine what the word tree represents. Documented in the Synonym Finder by J.I. Rodale on page 1255, tree is synonymous to family tree, lineage. On page 668, lineage is equivalent to people. On the authority of the New Strong's Exhaustive Concordance of the Bible, in the Hebrew and Chaldee Dictionary, on page 90, reference number 6086, tree in Hebrew is spelled from right to left, ayin to sadi sofit, pronounced eights. The Hebrew root for eights is atza, reference number 6095, and it is spelled with the Hebrew characters from right to left, ayin to sadi, hey. And it means to fasten or to make firm. That is, 
to close the eyes shut. From these definitions, we see that a tree is used here as a metaphor, which is a figure of speech in which a word literally denoting one kind of thing is used in place of another to suggest a likeness or an analogy between them. Therefore, tree is used here as a figure of speech to represent a family of people who have the ability to fasten or firmly close the eyes shut. Question. To fasten or firmly close the eyes shut of what? The answer is the knowledge of the laws of Yahweh. Let us open our Bible and read about this in Deuteronomy chapter 13 verses 1 through 5, which reads in part, If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams, and giveth thee a sign or a wonder. And he spake unto thee, saying, Let us go after other gods, which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet, or that dreamer of dreams. Ye shall walk after the Lord your God, Yahweh, and fear him, and keep his commandments, and obey his voice, and ye shall serve him, and cleave unto him. And that prophet, or that dreamer of dreams, shall be put to death, because he hath spoken to turn you away from the Lord your God, Yahweh, to thrust thee out of the way, which the Lord thy God, Yahweh, commanded thee to walk in. Tree is talking about a people who have the ability to fasten or firmly shut the eyes of the ways and the laws of Yahweh. To shut the eyes. Stated in the Random House College Dictionary, Revised Edition, Page 470, the word eye is defined as a center of light, intelligence, etc. In accordance with Webster's New World Dictionary, Third College Edition, copyright 1994, page 781, light is defined as mental illumination, knowledge or information, enlightenment, so tree is a word used in the place of a people who have the ability to fasten or firmly close or shut one's mental illumination and intelligence. Tree is also used in the place of a people who have the ability to fasten or firmly close or shut one off from the knowledge and information of the laws of Yahweh. Based upon these facts, to keep the Garden of Eden means that Yahweh commanded Adam to beware of people who may come into the Garden of Eden with the ability to mentally illuminate or enlighten his mind with knowledge that is mixed with good and evil. To be on the lookout for a people who might come speaking information that is fused with truth and lies. Yahweh commanded Adam to be on the alert for a group of people who would make themselves the center of intelligence by appearing to have holy knowledge but is merged with unholy knowledge. This was the knowledge that Yahweh commanded Adam not to eat from, because this was the knowledge that would cause Adam's spiritual eye to be fastened or firmly closed. To close one's spiritual eye means to close one's knowledge of the laws of Yahweh. 
to lack knowledge of the laws of Yahweh is surely death. We will talk more about this subject next week as we continue our discussion of the second commandment that Yahweh gave to man, Adam, in the Garden of Eden, which was to keep it. I bear witness to you today that the Messiah, Yahweh ben Yahweh, is here. I bear witness to you today that the Mahdi is here. I bear witness to you today that Shiloh is here. I bear witness to you today that the great light is here. I bear witness to you today that the Grand Master of the Celestial Lodge, Architect of the Universe, is here. I bear witness to you today that the Enlightened One is here. I bear witness to you today that the one all religions have been speaking of for almost 6,000 years is here. Thank you for listening and join us next week as we continue our discussion of the commandments of Yahweh. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one likened to the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace and his voice as the sound of many waters. At the end of time of evil rule, the Anointed One, the Messiah, shall appear. In 1979, Yahweh Ben Yahweh came to Miami and became the spiritual leader and founder of the Nation of Yahweh. Although he took a vow of poverty, in seven years he guided the nation to amass a $250 million empire. Under his direction, the nation of Yahweh has grown to encompass disciples, followers, and supporters in over 1,300 cities within the U.S. and 16 foreign countries. Yahweh Ben Yahweh is bringing about changes in the lives of individuals and is giving the world the keys to success in life politically, economically, educationally, socially, and spiritually. Sing and rejoice, O daughter of Zion, for lo, Yahweh Ben Yahweh has come, and he is dwelling in the midst of us. And many nations shall be joined to Yahweh ben Yahweh this day, and they shall be his people. Yahweh ben Yahweh is dwelling in the midst of us, and we know that Yahweh of hosts has sent Yahweh ben Yahweh unto us. And Yahweh ben Yahweh is causing us, Judah, to inherit his portion in the Holy Land. And he has chosen Jerusalem again. Be silent, O all flesh, before Yahweh ben Yahweh, for he has been raised up out of his holy habitation. Zechariah chapter 2, verses 10 through 13. This passage of scriptures stresses 
that the final exaltation of Jerusalem is exceeding anything it has known previously. Jerusalem is being overrun with people and cattle, like an unwalled town, according to Zechariah chapter 2, verse 4. More than this, Yahweh ben Yahweh is the glory within the city. Zechariah chapter 2, verse 5. Remember that this is the morning of the third day, and I shall rise again. I am the resurrection. It, all of prophecy tells you that I shall rise again. It's all about that. Luke chapter 2, verse 34. No doubt about it. Again, I love you forever. Bless you forever. I remind you once again, my associates are children of the light. <laughs> That just brings uh, laughter to my heart, to my soul, to realize that at last, I have those of you that love peace. And I only want to be in the presence of those of you that love peace. I love you forever. Shalom Aleichem. The scriptures are being fulfilled. For our Messiah, Yahweh ben Yahweh, has come. In John chapter 1, verse 49, Yahweh ben Yahweh is called the rabbi, which means he is the spiritual leader of the nation of Yahweh. Rabbi also means that Yahweh ben Yahweh is our educator and teacher. He is a scholar and the most prolific writer to have ever lived. Being clothed in righteousness makes him Yahweh ben Yahweh the most qualified to rule on all questions of the commandments, judgments, laws, and statutes of Yahweh. Thank you for joining us in the universe of Yahweh. And now we'd like to invite all of you to pray with us as we turn to the east with outstretched hands and say a prayer to our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, the Lord's Prayer in Hebrew. Come, let us pray. Tefillah. Ave nu shabashimayim, ye kardesh shimeika, tavo malkuteika, ye ase razonka, ki vashimayim king baaretz, et lekum kukenu, tain la nu hayom, uslak la nu, all karti enu, ki moshe sol kim, gamanak nu, la koteom la nu, ve al tefi enu, la de nisayom, kim kal se nu, min hara, kilaka, hamam laha, ve ha givera, Vehati Ferret, Leolame, Olamin Sila, we thank thee, O Yahweh, O living and eternal King, who has so mercifully restored our souls within us. Sila. Praise Yahweh, and always remember that the Father Yahweh and his Son Yahweh bin Yahweh love you, and your host loves you too. Shalom Aleikum. To order the companion book to the series, The Messiah Revealed, call 1-800-967-PEACE. That's 1-800-967-7337. And when you call, ask about the special discount on Yahweh, the ineffable name. Videos of this program are available. When ordering, please refer to the program number on the screen. You can now access the Divine Mind of Yahweh Ben Yahweh on the Internet at the address on the screen.